So how yeah. long of a session was this? One hour. One hour. Yeah. And what was wrong? A tight fashion or hips. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today's guest is a specialist in the world of fascia. Please welcome to the Jamcast, Margot J. Levitin. What's up, Margot? Hey, guys. Thank you for joining us. I really, really appreciate you coming down here. Thanks uh, for having me. For those of you out there, uh, Margot actually goes by the name of Vancouver Healer on Instagram and also Magic Fingers, right? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Magic Hands. Well, yeah. yeah. No, I had somebody who basically gave me that hashtag and totally. thought, thought it was really good branding and and pretty much a lot of the people that i work on are like what what's different like why you're and they all say like you're magic and totally. i'm like okay cool <laughs> let's do it let's go for it it's like uh it's like what what do they say you can't give yourself a nickname right you have to be like given your nickname for it to be official by other people Dude, so yes actually that's pretty true i guess it would be official and uh i can definitely attest to this and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to have Margot on the podcast is uh, i actually had a first-hand experience with her um um, I had heard about her throughout the dance community and through Instagram, obviously, um, because she posts a lot of cool posts all the time about the work she does on people and their bodies and the improvements she made. And uh, we got connected through some mutual friends and uh, I was able to just experience like a brief, I don't know. A little moment in just time. Just a little, yeah, just like a little sample. Like when you go to Costco and you're just like walk <laughs> by and you're like... Whoa, yes. that just kind of changed my life. I'm a cheese puff. I, I need more of that, you know? Yeah, yeah just yeah. like wait in line for the cheese puff and um, have a moment. And long story short, um, I'm someone that's had, I've been riddled with injuries, as all of you on the Jamcast know. Yeah. And one of the most recent ones was my shoulder surgery last year where I had six bone anchors put in, torn labrum. Um, it's pretty hardcore. My arm has been stuck at like 160 degrees for like a year and a half. I did physical therapy and rehab for five days a week. And my arm wouldn't break through that. She worked on my shoulder for 20 minutes, and I gained full range of motion back. What? It's crazy. Magic. It's crazy. <laughs> like, literally, my arm was stuck here for months, guys. And now I can just bring it to here. And it's affected everything because I can now touch down raise. All the moves that I was lacking uh, now are are super easy oh, and so, that's so good. i've been going around all week being like look guys look what i can do, <laughs> what I can do. and all my friends are mind blown because they know mm -hmm. how how like much i've been struggling with this i love that i absolutely love that so we got to get into it then okay what do you want what know? what did you do to me and what exactly <laughs> is fascia like i okay. think that'd be the most useful thing is to break down what fascia is for people all right let's break it down okay so everyone knows about muscles right? We know about muscles. We're taught about muscles, muscular stretching, working out, all of that kind of stuff. But there's this amazing tissue called fascia. Okay. And it basically, I describe it like people are human sausages. Okay. So if you picture a sausage, even for the vegetarians, you can be a quinoa sausage. That's okay. But Paul's vegan, so he appreciates exactly. that. And <laughs> exactly. And I'm sensitive to that. So, but basically you have the concept, which is a casing okay. around a substance. Okay, so the casing would be, are you referring the, to our skin or our bodies? Yeah, so just below your skin okay. is fascia. Okay. So in this case, I'm referring to the casing around the sausage is nice. the fascia. Okay, okay. Easy to picture, right? Understandable. Everyone understands the sausage. So what happens is over time, accident, illness, injury that fascia starts to get really tight okay. and almost like suffocate and squeeze the matter in between the casing, okay. which are muscles, organs, vessels. So blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, which is your immune system, okay. and nerve vessels. So, I mean, you can just imagine what, like, what that causes in the body. It seems like such an important, all-encompassing thing, it but I is. feel like people don't really talk about it that much. I know. Yeah, it's kind of like, I feel like everyone's always concerned about their muscles, like you said, or they just talk about, yeah, just ligaments and tissues and things like that. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm just so passionate about this, and I just, I love it because basically what happens is when you release that casing, yes. everything inside just goes bleh and relaxes. And is that what you're supposed to be at a natural state? It should just be relaxed. It should like just that. be blah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And so I believe, this is my belief, that that's the way to go. Why would you grind through muscle and, you know, to to get 
a result that's not as permanent. Okay. So basically what happens is when you when that tissue gets really stuck and tight and it kind of pulls up on everything, your whole body kind of pulls up, but you've got gravity trying to push you down. Yes. So you've got this weird push-pull going on through your whole system where, you know, a shoulder's stuck up here and a leg's pulled down here and you're you're just kind of out of sorts. Okay, okay. So what happens is when you release that, it just releases all the tension in your body. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. It just, it, it makes so much sense at a fundamental level. It right. just shocks me that it's not something that's commonly talked about. And I'm someone that has sought out massage regularly my entire life. Yeah. Uh, and what you did to me was so different. Um than the yeah. traditional deep tissue I get, the shiatsus I get sometimes, even the sports massage, it was very different. It's just a different intent. Yeah, so totally. So the intention isn't the muscle, the intention is the casing. Okay, so I think to try to help the layman out there and yeah. our, our, our fans out watching the Jamcast, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, definitely go on our YouTube or check out her Instagram so you can look at the uh, the diagrams we're taking a look at. Uh, you can check her out at Vancouver Healer. And uh, what's this first one we're looking at right here? It basically yes. says, what is fascia? Yeah, so fascia is connective tissue. Okay. So I just try to make it easy for people to understand because it sounds like confusing and like this whole new thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not new. So and essentially in that picture, you're just proving that it's everywhere. Yeah, it's kind it of... is head to toe. Okay. It is a continuous sheath. I used to call it like a Spider-Man bodysuit underneath your skin. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah, it's yeah. actually, it's like a web formation. So the components of fascia are actually fibers. Okay. So it does form like this, this sort of webbing around everything. Okay. And then the other component that's really important is something called ground substance, which gives it almost this gelatinous, fluid um, resting state. Okay. Problem is, n- nobody has that state. No yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of us don't drink enough water and caffeinate a lot. Yes. And it just, it's just when it gets dehydrated, it starts to just get really stuck and bind everything. Okay, so I mean, that's something that... Uh that I wanted to ask you about is like, what does the effect of water have on fascia? Is it the same as muscles and what we're told our whole life um, that obviously you need to stay hydrated? Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, you should just be staying hydrated anyways because your body is, you know, I think 60 to 80% water. So most of us I'm always drinking water, guys. Just so you know, this is is sparkling water. I was just about to say. This is sparkling water. Mm -hmm. For all of you that think I drink soda every episode, it's not. (laughs) hydration gang you know Mm -hmm. um so yeah i think as as far as fascia goes it's super important because of that ground substance um when people ask me hey what can i do to keep my fascia happy and that's basically it hydrate okay move because it needs to move you don't elasticity it needs it yeah you don't you know when you start to get stuck and sedentary that's when things start to bind up right The third, which is the most important, is stretching. Okay. So taking movement to like the next level where you're actually going to engage it and stretch it. And is that mostly static stretching or active stretching or just kind of everything all encompassing? It's interesting because it's, it is static stretching, but it's a different um, level. So when I get people to stretch, I'll say, go to that point where you feel that pull and then back off, get your own sandwich. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that you are just in this like pocket where it's it feels like you're doing nothing. Okay. And then you should just hold at that, or should you try to break barriers? Yeah. Each week? Exactly. So you just hold that, and you'll once you start to get used to being in what I honestly just call that pocket. But once you start getting used to that, you'll start to feel it kind of give. Okay. And then you'll get further in your stretch. Okay. And you'll do the same thing. You'll go to like where it feels like you're stretching and then you just back off slightly. Okay. And then you'll feel it give again. It's wow. it's really neat. I mean, I do this every morning before I start work because of me overusing my body. I'll okay. lie like on the it. table and I'll just hang out and then I'll wait and it'll let go and I just keep doing that. Wow. Okay. And how long do you suggest the average person listening stretches for or starts to get into a regular routine about well it depends on how screwed up you are (laughs) for people who are super active with their bodies like dancers and stunt people and you know your people yeah uh especially the tricking community (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I recommend stretching fascially probably three times a day. Wow. Okay. Up to five, depending okay. on what you're doing. You know, okay, great. Um, like if you're putting in workouts and obviously you need to stretch around those workouts, but yeah, and regardless, you should stretch in the morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the most important thing too, is to stretch before activity and mm-hmm. to stretch after. Yes. Always. Okay. There's, there's just, there's no, no thing going on there. You have to do it before so that you elongate everything to its optimal length. Then you work it out. Mm-hmm. And then you go back to optimal weight. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad that you're sharing this advice because yeah. we have a lot of younger listeners out there that um, have not hit uh, full maturity right. of their bodies yet yes. where soreness kicks in. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, it's good for them to hear this, I feel like. Yeah, it's really, really good advice. I honestly, that's my biggest advice to anybody in life. Um, I know it's not super popular through generations. Like with my father, he didn't grow up stretching. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a thing you know, this whole thing with rolling out or, you know, even all the modalities we have with like yoga and Pilates and yoga lattes and like everything that we have at our disposal wasn't really popular then. Yes. Yeah, so totally. it's, it's much more um, accepted now, but absolutely stretch every day. You guys, it will prolong your life. It'll, um, I'm all about maintenance and prevention. I'm yeah. not one of those people that likes to like put band-aids on things and just you know, like I like to fix things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the the best way for me to do that is for you to take care of your vehicle first. Yeah, to just do regular maintenance. Just do regular maintenance. I mean, especially for people that use their bodies as much as you guys do, it blows my mind how half your population population doesn't stretch. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. Half of them don't stretch and even more of them don't do myofascial release or go for maintenance and repair or no. body work. So I mean it's you're in a tough industry and there's a lot of pressures on your body and you have to perform like this. So, you know, you get, I've had clients that are like, I just got called to this thing and they were like, just do a flip cold. Yeah. This happens all the time. Right. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. what are they, they ask you to do that? Yeah. And so, right. And so, I mean, the way you can sort of prepare for that is to just keep yourself limber and mobile and hydrate before you even get to that stage. So yeah. that if somebody just says, hey, could you just pop off a trick for me or whatever, you at least have that going for you where you might not injure yourself. Okay, so just try to be at a, a, a relatively natural state of flexibility yeah. so that you don't have to force it when the time comes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Paul, can you pull up the second picture, the second and third one here, just taking a look back at fascia a little bit more? Yes. Um, I like this picture because... Uh, it says, guess what? This is fascia too. And it's pointing to all parts of the body. Yeah. Uh, and one of the ones that really blew my mind is the arrow to the head. Oh my God, yes. yes. So so there's fascia in the head? There, hey. Okay. Like I said, it's continuous head to toe. So kind of what's missing here is that they've sort of broken it down into like the thickenings of the fascia. Okay. And that's what I wanted people to see because... It's great to try and describe that there's this whole bodysuit covering all of that, but this is more relatable because everyone's like, oh, that's like my skull, skull. that's my tendon, that's my ligament, that's my T-band, my iliotibial band or IT band, you know, if you know what that is. And yes, on the skull, absolutely. I mean, once you get past the skin and the hair... If you just kind of sink down and just, you can even feel it yourselves right now. Just take your fingers on your skin and your scalp. Paul's doing it. Paul's doing it. I love it. (laughs) And you can feel that. Just gently kind of rock it back and forth. Can you feel how there's like something just beyond the skin, Paul? I think so. I think so. Okay. So what's crazy about that, and that's like another thing that ties into one of the other kind of things that I that I love to do is called craniosacral. Okay. Um, Especially for you guys, because you like hit your heads on things all the time. Someone kicks you in the (laughs) face or something falls on you or just like, I'm at eight concussions right now. So dude, oh my God. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Sweet. And you don't, you don't even know how much that's impacting you. So basically Uh, my first, yeah, right now everyone's thinking about it. Yeah. So my first, um, the first thing I do is I look at that exact tissue okay. on your skull and I see like where all the little like stuck bits are mm-hmm. and 
that is a huge area for wow. stuck bits. And what effect would the cranial stuff have? Would it affect your whole body or is it just localized to the head? No, it affects your whole body. Your cranial system is your rest and digest system. Oh, wow. You've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Okay. We have our fight or flight yep. where we're like, ah, tiger. But then you have your rest and digest, <laughs> totally. which is supposed to be like your zen, your chill. You're able to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. You're able to sleep. But what happens is that system gets really affected if it can't function properly. Ah. And anytime you have like a little piece of that stuckness or kind of what I call like chewed up gum is what it feels like to me, then it inhibits that system from functioning properly. Totally. Paul, I I think there's a picture that we've pulled out before of like some, a gum diagram. The gum. Ah! reference. (laughs) So what what is the gum in reference to? Here it says that's what, this is what scar tissue feels like. Everybody asks me all the time, what does scar tissue feel like? And so I was, again, I'm just trying to make it super funny, approachable, show my personality for like what it feels like to me, which is literally that. It feels like someone chewed up a piece of pink gum and then stuck it there. Wow. So it it has the it has the potentiality to soften. That's okay. why I chose gum and not glue. Ah, that's a good uh because obviously yeah. Yeah. So okay. if if you apply the proper forces and and do this technique, you can actually like soften that gum so that it becomes mobile again. Okay. But it, it literally feels like it. It feels like when I'm working on someone, I'm always like, hey, like I probably did it with you. Like, do you feel where my fingers get stuck? Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's to just make you aware, like that is the part where you got stuck down and it's not muscular, it's fascial. So you tore that fascia, that fascia was like, oh dude, we got a hole, mayday, mayday. Okay. We got to fix that. It fills in the tissue okay. with, um, you could get technical, but the little fiber blasts come along <laughs> and they bleh, puke out collagen fibers. Okay, to re- help repair. Yeah, so it kind of makes this like matting to fix it. Mm. So then the body stops registering that there's a problem because the hole is now filled. Okay. But what you're left with after the injury is this very stuck piece of tissue that nobody talks about, nobody addresses, and it's still there. I feel like scar tissue is just like a... It's just like a word that gets thrown out. Like, yeah. I have scar tissue there. What What is scar tissue? That's that basically is, what you said, That right? is literally it's, what it it's is. It's what happens when you tear fascia, yes. stuff goes to repair, and yes. then that's what's in its place. Yes. And is scar tissue negative then or positive? It's positive in the sense that it's healing, but it can yeah. become negative, right? Well, I see it as negative because that structure will never be the same in integrity, uh, ever. It okay. can't be as strong because it's, it's not an integrity anymore. And though the body is amazing at trying to fill in that hole, it's still not stable enough. Okay. And what we're talking about now is now there is this like stuck piece of gum. So now think about all the times you've hit your head, fallen Mm -hmm. on your butt, kicked and torn something, ripped it, whatever fell off of you. You know what I mean? You guys are full of, you're like, it's seriously candy wonderland for what I do. I'm pretty sure I look like that second diagram, but it's just (laughs) all scar tissue. (laughs) Which, I feel like I'm just, mine's just, instead of that, this is all fascia, I would just say, this is all scar tissue. This is all scar Uh, tissue. um, Okay, so with with that being said, I guess, as far as scar tissue is concerned, what amount of pressure or injury does it take to cause scar tissue? Like, would I get scar tissue from doing this? Or does it take like traumatic stuff, I That's guess? That's a great question. I've never super thought about that. Okay. There's two ways. This is how I describe it to people. There are two ways that I would put scar tissue in quotes because I also use the word adhesion. Okay. Because cool. there's two ways this can happen. One is you tear it. And no, I don't no. think just hitting the brick wall would tear it. Totally. I feel like if you look at, um, you know, the degrees of strain or sprain, mm-hmm. which is what you're tearing totally, actually totally it's zero to um 15 yes. percent then 15 do you know what i mean yeah, and yeah. up so you have to have some kind of force where it would at least tear 15 percent. For, for those of you out there there's like level one sprain level two yes. sprain level two sprain yeah okay. degrees they totally. call them degrees first degree second degree third yeah. degree sprain and strain um so yeah you would have to you'd have to have some kind of some sort of some kind of something, something where basically it just couldn't with it couldn't sustain that force okay. and just was like, I give up and tears. So then is the goal with your work part of it, or not not the only goal, but is part of the goal to eradicate scar tissue in the body to free a range of movement? 
Yeah. Okay. So let me talk about the adhesion part first. Okay. So the scar tissue is that tearing. Yes. Where I see, and it is an adhesion essentially, but what I'm talking about when I say adhesion is what I've discovered. I mean, I've done this for 14 years. Yeah. So I've learned a lot along the way. And this is what I sort of surmise is that when our bodies are stuck in different postures, Mm -hmm. You know, like your shoulder, for instance, was probably stuck forward and up, you know, and it just feels like it's protecting itself, yeah, right? Yeah, it's it doesn't, guarding. it doesn't know that the surgery is over, the injury is over, it's time to let go, dude. Totally. So it holds you in that position. Ah. So what happens is your body actually recognizes that as like, oh, this must be my new posture. I need to protect it even more. So it actually lays down more tissue wow which is what i call an adhesion because it's not that you tore it again it's that the body's mechanism for defense and for protection is to glue you down further so you don't injure it further the body has so many adaptive responses that are crazy it's freaking amazing it's an insane machine it's like the what you're saying right now is blowing my mind but it's like (laughs) this happens to every single one of us in this room on a daily basis absolutely the body is just a machine it just just, it just and it's so good at compensating and trying to be symmetrical and trying to regulate itself basically in all its different ways so the average person then that doesn't have their scar tissue worked out it just sits. It's just there. And I was, you know, I gave a talk the other day at um, a dance space. I'm a space. Okay. Shout out, shout to, out to I'm a space. Yeah. Shout out to Wildebeest. Yes. Love, and to and to Marianne um, at I'm a Breathe. She was awesome. lovely and had me come and talk to her students. Awesome. And, you know, I was just telling them that oh, I was working on this girl very, very recently and I, I can feel it. It's... It's just something super sensitive in my fingers that I feel when things are stuck that aren't Mm -hmm. muscular. And I said to her, like, dude, what have you done to your head? And she was like, nothing. And so I've over the years, it's been like, what have you done? What have you done? Now it's like, okay, have you ever hit your head, had a blow to the face, fallen backwards? Concussion is like the very, very last thing I ask now because people won't, they'll say like, oh, I've never had a concussion. But that does not mean you have not hit your head or yeah. your face or you know anything so i kept asking her over and over and over again nothing and i just kept working on her and it's an interesting thing with fascia because fascia also on a different level stores all of our emotions oh yeah interesting it's another thing to get into but what happens is sometimes when i work on people when i start working that tissue they'll start remembering ah uh. So it triggered her memory and she was like, look, the only thing I can think about is, uh, and shout out to Ashley in Vancouver um, for this story because it, it blew my mind. In 14 years, I had never like seen something like this. She's like, the only thing I can think of is when I did my first day of kindergarten, I fell forward and I hit my head on a desk. Oh, that's a long time ago. Aha. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's it. It's still in there. Wow. And it just kind of solidified just sort of what I've thought over the years that it doesn't go anywhere. It just sits there if you don't get it worked out. Yeah. And that's why people can start to, I guess, uh, for people that have like very traumatic injuries, yeah. they tend to have like locked up, isolated things related to the injury. And yeah. it could just be caused by the adhesions and the scar tissue. Absolutely. Wow. That mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Okay. That's why I do a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because first of all, I honestly, I haven't really found anybody that does does what I do, how I do it. Yes, it's very different. And one of the things that I can attest to, for those of you out there that are probably completely tripping and confused on all the things (laughs) we're talking about right now, um, especially with like, how how the hell did she fix my shoulder in 20 minutes? The one thing that I'll say that's so different about her technique and the way that the fascia and the scar tissue is broken up is that there's no pain and there's no deep digging like I feel in deep tissue massage. In deep tissue massage, I'm literally doing i don't know for lack of a better term breathing exercises like i'm about to have a baby sometimes yeah you're you know bracing your, i'm I literally have, over I have here people just get like, on my table <laughs> you know like, yeah people get on my table and they like brace themselves i'm yeah. like what are you doing and like, yeah. it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt especially the t-bands that's what i was gonna say it's almost been like uh, <clears> people almost like relate like oh the deeper you dig the better you're doing even like when yeah. it comes to like self-care i have a lot of friends and i were we like, you know, we'll dig with tennis balls and we get to the point where we're like, oh, I'm, I'm killing myself. But it's helping. Yeah. But like when I worked with you, you're literally like, uh, do you feel it? And I'm like, not really. 
<laughs> and you said that it would just basically feel like fingers just rubbing on my skin like this. Just below it. Yeah. yeah. And so when you're doing that, what exactly is happening? Yeah. And, and, and how are you able to achieve it with such minimal force compared to like deep tissue? So I went to school uh, to become a registered massage therapist in Canada and school's three years and you learn all these different techniques and all these different styles. And I just kind of saw that like everybody puts force on the body. I call them tissue pushers. Mm -hmm. I'm not a tissue pusher. Okay. I'm a tissue listener. So when I put my hands on you, it's, it's literally like their ears and they're just trying to listen to see like, okay, what's stuck, what's not happy, what's not moving. And it takes very little force. And what I noticed over the years was when I, when I let up on my force in even, honestly, even in a deep tissue relaxation massage, mm -hmm. um, that I absolutely practiced when I was in school and for two years after, um, is that very little force is required. You don't, it, you, the more you, the way I look at it is the more you push the tissue, the more that tissue has to go into the pain cycle response. Yeah. It's almost like getting agitated and, and it's like, well, well, what's happening? You come in yeah. and you have a problem and you already experience, um, you know, pain, discomfort, whatever. And now I go in and I create it whole new pain cycle for you, which now you not only have to get over the, that one, you have to get over the one that you came in with. Yeah. So to me, it just isn't logical. I'm like, okay, why would I do that to someone? Yeah, and I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm going to put myself out there on blast and say, like, I've been guilty of getting deep tissue massages my whole life to the point where, like, you try to breathe through the pain and you basically equate, like, okay, like, go ahead and dig as deep as you want. Totally. But then it does put your body in a state of tension for that brief second, I guess. Which and is, you know, you're creating you know, more inflammation. Yes. And that's the point. That's the pain cycle is that it's redness, inflammation, heat, and pain. Yep. Swelling. So I just thought like, personally, I don't like pain. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out honestly for myself, hey, is there a way that I can like help myself and help other people where we don't have to go through pain? Is it, and I question that, is it necessary to have to go through pain to heal? Okay. And this is just me. I don't believe it is. I don't believe it is because I see it with people every day where I don't need to put them in pain and they heal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I don't think you need to. I think it is. I think it's a societal thing. The whole like no pain, no gain, yeah, you know, yeah, of course. it's just very conditioned. And I feel like, you know, it's, I'm not saying that it's not effective. It definitely does what it does. And it, you know, it loosens things up for the person that is in a state of tension Totally, yeah. and it gets circulation flowing and it gets the blood flowing and it does relax everything around it so that the bones can adjust. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It um, does serve a purpose. It definitely it, does. Just a different purpose. I, I go and have a 180 minute massage every week cool. just to release that tension and, and just to feel, you know, petted yeah, really yeah, totally no i think that's cool for them to hear out there yeah. so it's like you know you're still oh, yeah. no, you're not only a practitioner i, but I you, am you know. all about everything you know acupuncture and and regular massage and fascial massage and reiki and healing like whatever floats your boat and totally. whatever works for you cool okay i just happened to find this very specific niche when i was in school called myofascial release totally where I was just, I just grooved on it. I explain it to dancers. It's like when you find that it's like hippity hop that you yeah, love yeah, or yeah. contemporary yeah, or yeah. tap. It's like your groove. You just find your thing. Just yeah, yeah. find your thing. And then it's, it just works with what I do. Okay. So I found that in my second term of school. And although I had to, you know, keep doing all of the regular stuff with all the students until I graduated, it stuck with me. And I think one of the reasons that I am extremely good at this is I would go to school for however long it was, like nine to five, and then would come home and I would work on my friends and my family doing myofascial release for like six hours sometimes at oh, night. Wow. Really honing that skill. Just on your own. Not just practicing yeah. because I just loved it and I didn't feel like we did enough of it in school. We had wow. one term of it in school and I was like, mm -mm, this is, there's something about this. Okay. And so I got kind of known in my school for like, if somebody was interested in that style, we had a clinic in our school, people would come to me and I would do that. And okay. so I, I just kind of grooved on it. And then when I graduated, I practiced like all the other sheep, just like deep tissue, Swedish, I call it swimming massage. Yeah. 
And it just didn't do anything for me. I didn't feel fulfilled. I didn't feel like I was fixing anything. I just felt like, again, I was putting band-aids on things. Okay. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this weird jump and leap and totally not do that anymore and just do what I love and specialize in that and go do all my continuing education in it and only practicing that. Um, and it was definitely a harder, I say it's a definitely a harder road to hoe because it isn't known. Yeah, 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 definitely. And it takes a lot more patience. It takes a lot more education on both parts because now I have to kind of say to you, hey, you know this whole mentality you have of deep tissue Swedish relaxation? I don't do that. Yeah. I yeah, do yeah. something completely different. This is what I do. Let's see what you think. Yeah, so totally. it's it's just been a harder, harder to find a clientele and harder to educate people which yeah. is why i'm, sure I'm the, like the psyched folk, to yeah. be here because <laughs> i'm sure for the common know? folk yeah they don't know a lot for for people in our community though i will say that at least the term myofascial release is something that comes up a lot cool. uh, and it's something i wanted to ask you about because um and i don't know what kind of answer i'm going to get so i'm just going to ask it Ooh. um <laughs> what i think the the most common way that most of us know about myofascial release yeah. is by buying a lot of these self home treatment products Are you whether talking it's about like rolling? whether it's a theracane whether oh, it's rolling and so boy. i have to ask you okay is it beneficial for us to do this okay <laughs> <laughs> I Okay. You can also take the fifth and then. No. <laughs> I just feel like the, I'm I Canadian. feel like the average person. There oh, is yeah, no okay. fifth. I feel like the average I don't even person, know what the though, fifth yeah. is except like Beethoven. Especially so. our listeners, though. I feel like they would kill me if I didn't ask this yes. because they all, everyone I know has a foam roller. Yes. Everyone has a softball or a tennis ball. Yeah. Is okay. it beneficial or are we just wasting our time? Okay. So this is my answer to that. And I get asked this all the time because when I ask people, hey, do you stretch? This is the term I get. I roll, I roll out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the viewers and I'm going to try and describe it to them. But if right now everyone's sitting there, you guys included, take two fingers, put it on your skin, and just rub over the skin. You feel skin. You can kind of feel the structures underneath, probably mm -hmm. muscle. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Now stop. Take your fingers again. And instead of just being on the skin, just sink down like just a little bit down and feel that sort of tension. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel that? I feel that, yeah. Paul? Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's fascia. Okay. So now think about rolling. If you are rolling like this, are you affecting the fascia? No, you have to go a little deeper. Right. Yeah. So really, you shouldn't really have to move much. So when I go to the gym and I see people rolling and it looks they're like... big, gigantic moves. And it looks like this, they're not actually fascial rolling. Oh. So it should be a smaller micro movement. It should be, you know, sinking in and then just like that. Like, can you barely see that move? Yeah, you can barely see the move. Yes. And that's very similar to the technique you did on me because yes. you would just feel like, I would just feel little micro movements. Yeah. So so you can achieve somewhat of a release if you do it properly. Yeah. Okay. But it's just it's just sort of like this conception of how people have seen other people do it and yeah, yeah. mimic it. And they're also, they don't really understand the tissue they're trying to affect. They hear, it's a fascial roller. This is what people do. Oh, Paul, don't worry. I got you. <laughs> I, Paul is there yeah, working yeah. on his shoulder. It tends to happen yeah. when I'm around people. It's really they funny. They start to become aware They of their start tension. to like touch. They start yeah. to do all this stuff while I'm having lunch with them. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I got, I got you later. Yeah, we'll we'll set up something. But anyways, so yes, it is effective. It just has to be done right. But it depends on your intent. So if your intent is, I mean, you call it fascial rolling, but if your intent is to roll out your muscles, I call it cookie doughing. It's like you're taking a rolling pin yeah. and cookie doughing yourself. Great. Cool. You do you, boo. Like that works for you. It helps stimulate circulation. Yeah. It does some and, stuff. And yeah, some yeah. people really like sitting on trigger points, which yes. is those knots. Totally. They just sit on them and they, they, they think that's fascial rolling. If your intent is actually to engage the fascia, it's just a different level of tissue. Mm. You just have to learn the level of tissue. And that's why I do this. So if you can practice on yourself and you can feel it, when you put the roller on you, you will feel that sinking in and then just that bare stretch. Okay. Have you used or have you seen the uh, vibrational technology stuff? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is a good story, actually, because this isn't something that I do or use. 
but I had a friend who had one of those Duma hickeys the other yeah, day. Okay. And I was like, okay, I, I got to try this totally. because one of my things is I won't recommend anything or I, I won't really give you my opinion unless I've experienced it. Yes. So I tried the Duma hickey and I tried on my pack muscles because those are usually like, this is the area that I overwork, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Just from my job. And so it, the vibration actually like kind of made me want to throw up. So I don't know if it was just too stimulating. Um, it definitely left my muscle in a state of jelly. Okay. Next day though. Back. To back. Me. Okay. There, so, there is one thing I will say about vibration and fascia though, because it is important. And so I feel like you will affect it. Uh, fascia has this thing called um, electro piezo electric. Okay. So basically it means that if you put like a force through it where it's like a vibration or a shake, it will send an electrical current along it and it will release. Okay. So I feel like all of those like vibrational machines that, you know, like the ones like that you stand on and like. Oh, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, like blah, at the like, gym. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. As well as the Duma hickeys that people use, it does, it does in a way, in a, in a small way, affect the fascia. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's a good answer to have because we all have them. <laughs> I got one. Paul's got one. Yeah. yeah. And, so and at least again, you're doing something, but it's like, yeah. But more importantly, I think it's really good to what you brought up, which is don't try to do these gigantic movements of anything, just little micro movements. If you want to engage the fascia. Okay. If you want a cookie dough, go for it. Roll out those muscles, whatever makes you feel good and that you're loose. And I know I have a lot of dancer friends that live with those things. Yeah, yeah. And when they're in, you know, 15 hour rehearsals or, you know, you're on set, that's what you have. Totally. So you don't have a Margo. So yeah. Use it. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Really quick. Yeah. I know people are probably wondering, what uh, the hell is this trash bag doing in the middle oh, here? Oh, okay. What, yes. what is this? Yeah. What, oh, what is this trash bag simulating? This has become like, this is just great. I came up with this the other day at, at the talk I did. So what I want to describe here is the difference between fascia and muscle. Okay. Okay. And this is important because this is why on a physiological level, Fascial release lasts longer than muscle. Okay. It's not because it's better than it. Some are like, oh, because it's better. No, it actually has properties that change. Okay. Okay. So first I'm going to show you this, which is just an elastic band. Okay. Just a rubber band for those of you listening. Yep. Exactly. And I'm just pulling it in and out. Just showing the elasticity. Just like an elasticity. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. This is muscle. Okay. Muscle has elasticity. Yes. It has this and then recoil. Totally. Yeah. This and then recoil. Lengthens and shortens. Right. But it always goes back to its original state. Yes. Right? It doesn't ever just stay like elongated yeah, like that. Yeah. Right? I it guess always, all you can do is just over time loosen it to the point where yeah, it's... Yeah, where it's, it's a little bit it's looser and it has a... Looser. a yeah, it has a bit more of a spring to it, but it will always go back to resting. Totally. Right. So, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Now we have this plastic bag which is representative of fascia. Okay. Fascia has plasticity, mm. which means you can change it. Okay. Okay. And not only can you change it, it will hold that change. Because you can shape it, so to speak, or affect yes, it. Yes, okay. exactly. So I describe it like this. So for the viewers, I am taking a garbage bag and I'm just literally stretching it. Oh, it's changing the property of it. Yes. I got it's you. It's changing the shape. It doesn't so go back to that. It's it doesn't out. go ah. back to that. Exactly. Science. Science. <laughs> yeah, science oh, for that's the a win. Good, that's a good way to explain it. Holy Thank crap. You. Thank okay. you. Yeah, because... It, it changes the physical state of it as opposed to just uh, temporarily yeah. changing the state. So this is kind of cool, you guys. Mm. Ready for this? A fascial release lasts 20,000 times longer than a muscular treatment you know what's crazy please tell me i can attest to that in the sense that after you worked on my shoulder yeah i didn't tell any of my friends till the next day because i you wanted just i wanted to see like is it gonna hold yeah 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 and so i waited a day and i was like oh shit it held i can show i know and i how long ago was that this this was like over a week it was was probably over a week ago right and when i got here i was like hey dude how's the shoulder still good it's still good and that's what's crazy it's held for almost a week and a half now to where like I've been talking to Paul about this for weeks and I was like you have no idea dude like it's blowing my mind and that demonstration really helps a lot to show how it changes the state of things and how you can help get back to uh 
like you said, lasting longer than massage. And I think that's a great segue into some of these last photos I want to look at here. What you got? Um, which I think are some like real life examples, it looks ah, like, from some of your clients yes. here. So this one right here is someone that's uh, positioned in a traditional butterfly stretch, just like stretching out her hips. Yes. In the first picture, um, yes. clearly uh, she just looks like she's having issues getting her hips to open up. <laughs> yes. And in the second one, she looks like, you know, a little more relieved. So how yeah. long of a session was this? One hour. One hour. Yeah. And what was wrong? A tight fascia in her hips. In there her was hips. also... Um, and so she really, in the first one, was trying and just couldn't push him down. Yeah, I mean, we all have that yeah. where we have a resting state of certain body positions and postures where it's like, uh, wow. yeah, they don't go down lower. Yeah, yeah. And it was really cool because, yeah, hips don't lie. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Paul, pull up the next one. Let's take a look at this other one here. So this is another one that kind of blew my mind. Is this is this hamstring? Is this hip? What, what yeah, was, what this was is wrong hamstring. With this so this is... Um, a lot of dancers um, and just people that like you guys overuse their bodies, you will have micro tears all the way along and you guys are just, your pain tolerance is so high and you just push through the craziest stuff that it'll just kind of keep incrementally getting more stuck and more stuck because uh, every time you do it, you tear it again. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And so for this specific person, she was it was more affecting her knees, but it was because she had torn had previously torn her hamstrings in a few different places wow. and just by releasing those like little pieces of gum she was able to have a better range of motion just full disclosure that was the next thing i'm going to show you What'd on my you body show? is uh yeah. i haven't shown you my hamstring yet oh <laughs> i have a really bad one really <laughs> yeah yeah is it i've been waiting be yeah good? paul knows yeah it's really yeah, I'll take a before and after pick for you guys Amazing. on this one. But but this is an injury I've had for a while. So yeah. can't wait to show you. And I'm let's, excited. Let's pull up this last one here. And this one, um, so yeah. is this a jaw issue? Is yeah. This... So another one of the things that I find super interesting is jaw stuff. So oh, yeah. typically called TMJ. Totally. That's just the name of the joint, but it's the dysfunction that we're looking at. And so I went and did a bunch of different courses to specialize in that as well. So that is is a different kind of thing, but it's with the same premise of all of the connective tissue inside. But I put a glove on and I actually put my finger in your mouth okay. and release it all very gently. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that that blew my mind too. I was like, what? <laughs> huh? That is super wild. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. And these Thank are all you. generally just one session. And... Yeah, that was one. That was an hour. Wow. I mean, not even an hour because it doesn't take that long. Yeah, it's funny that I'm, ask, I'm asking. I'm like acting surprised, but you fixed my shoulder in 20 minutes, so I don't really know why I'm acting too surprised about that. Totally. No, it's really really cool. Okay. I, I think the difference with me, because that's another thing I I really wanted to talk about, is just that. I just approach the body very gently mm -hmm. and I give it, it's, I respect it and I give it its space and, and it just responds to my hands, whatever totally. you want to call that magic or a lot of years in school or just a patience that a lot of people don't work with. I feel like that, that makes me different. And also I really care about you guys. Yeah, I yeah. check in with everyone and you know, just ask like what's going on to provide a support after because people do th like, this is crazy. Like, what did you do to me? You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? You've also mentioned that there's times where you hit up people and you're like, hey, I haven't heard from you. And they're like, oh, it's because I'm fine. It's because I'm good. <laughs> it's because I'm good. It's almost like bad for business, you know? You well, like solve the problem and you're like, damn. <laughs> exactly. But I've always said, you know, that person's going to refer everyone and their dog. Yes. So, 100%. and and dogs. I've worked on some dogs. Yeah. Too. I actually saw a picture of that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, but I was like, oh, yeah, no, no. Now I have worked on dogs. Wow. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, and so just for, for those of our listeners out there that are listening, um, w what can they do in order to seek out treatment like this? Like, obviously, yeah, we talked about a lot of stuff where they can try to make adjustments to their own self-treatment, but is this something widespread or should they do that yeah. to seek you out individually? I, I get messages all the time from around the world, cool. like, who in my city does this? Yes, And it's also kind of it's prompted me to kind of think about creating a network now because I really don't know people that do this. I know the one guy that was my mentor that, you know, lives in Vernon in British Columbia and Canada. And then I know a very few people, but I want to see more of this out there. And, and that's another reason that I want to educate people so that they're like, Oh, I got to try that. My best advice is to wherever you live, 
look up whatever that body is of like a college of massage therapists or a massage therapy association and try and it'll be trial and error, but just ask, you know, who practices myofascial release? Myofascial release, release not traditional massage techniques. Exactly. Specifically myofascial I'm going to give you release. a hint though, you guys, because I've heard this through numerous people now. If they're using oil or lubrication or any kind of anything, it is not myofascial release. Oh, not, that's a good one. Not the traditional way. Yeah, understood. Okay. Because if you just even think about any time you put a lubrication on, you're going to slip. Yeah, you're so not going to get that You're not going to get down. Ah. So if they're doing that, in my opinion, that is not proper myofascial release. Wow. You need to sink down into that tissue and you need not to have anything to disrupt that tissue level. That's so, so crazy. If I mean, they it say makes it, a lot of sense though, about the yeah. oil thing, how your fingers will slide more. Yes. Oh. So just check it out. Ask people, ask around, ask your friends. Um, I'm in Vancouver and yeah. <laughs> I've actually had people say like, I'll fly to you. Just, yeah. just like <laughs> I have three people right now that are like, I'll fly from New York. I'll fly from Minnesota. I just to experience it's, what you do. And to me, that's super freaking special because um, I love what I do. It's not far fetched. There's a couple of like chiropractors on YouTube that are huge that people now fly to from around the world just because wow. they hear about what they do and stuff so amazing my yeah. ideal is basically to be able to work wherever i totally. don't know how that works um but i'm looking at doing visa stuff right now um for the states so that i can bring this to you guys totally. and i can help your community and um but i i would love to be able to just go oh yeah you know what just taking off to london to go yeah. work you know seriously so, yeah. I hope it's something that becomes more widespread and hopefully, I'm trying. hopefully people can go out there and try to, you know, seek it out on their own and stuff like that. In an ideal world, yes. um, someone like myself or someone like Paul that's very athletic and we do this as a profession, how often should we be getting treatments done or how often should we be getting our body checked out for this release? Yeah, good question. So again, I feel like it's going to depend on how screwed up you are. Okay. So uh, when I see people, I just typically do like a history and assessment of literally as much as I can of their body history how many concussions have you had how many tailbone falls and then I can kind of just feel like over time I've been able to feel like what's more chronic versus what's more acute mm -hmm. so what's developed really soon and what's been in there for 20 years um, so somebody that's had something like that it's going to take a little bit longer but I always say like hey I'm going to try to knock it out in one session like yeah, yeah. why when you people are like that. hey I'm going to have to see you five to 10 times. And I'm like, mm, I try to get it done in an hour. So I don't know what's happening, but let's try an hour and go from there. Totally. And the good news is, is that it holds longer than other massage. So if you target yeah. certain things, you can just kind of work your way through. And yeah. Then... And because it holds, it's sort of like, then when people see me again, I get to like the next level or the next layer of whatever is going on okay and sorry i'm asking a lot of questions that i personally want to know <laughs> but this is because this is so intriguing to me cool, but this, whatever. Is, this is one of the other questions i had related to that which yeah. is if one of us sustains an injury so say i'm tr training today and i feel like oh crap what did i just do to my hamstring or my leg yeah should i seek out treatment immediately or should i rest first and then seek out treatment after the scar tissue and stuff builds good so to speak and really the adhesions, good question you know yeah 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 so there's a few different ways to approach that. If you're talking like muscle, joint, that kind of thing, okay. um, fascia, we were told in school that like specifically for a car accident, you want to try and get the person on your table between 24 and 48 hours. Oh, crap. Right? Like any kind of whiplash or soft wow. tissue injury. I don't think that's common knowledge. Yeah. And okay. I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Um I was just hanging out at home one day and my dad had a minor car accident and he came home and I was like, oh, I got to test this out. They ta they're telling us in school 24 to 48 hours. He's never had a problem with his neck. So I feel like that's a great question because it's almost like before the scar tissue process happens maybe oh. or in its like infantile stages where you can catch it and try and change it before it becomes that piece of gum. Yes. Before it like solidifies that scar tissue. Okay. So that's a super good example of that. Um, I I believe like you could literally get fascial release every day. Um, we were told in school the same thing. Like 
when you get a muscular massage, you don't want to get too many because it is so stimulating. Like you mm-hmm. wouldn't go every day and have that treatment. It's exhausting on the body. Yeah, yeah. But I work on people daily and some people come and see me every day. Some people come and see me twice a week. I'm respectful of time and resources. So that's why I try and knock it out in an hour. Your time and your money is important to you and to me. And I want to make sure that I'm using the amount of time I have. But I feel, you know, I can see people. I've seen probably, maybe I would say up to seven times. Mm, It's been probably the most. Yeah, yeah. What's crazy though is that you could technically see you repeatedly because you don't get sore like on deep tissue and stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. When I had my treatment from you, I woke up. I, I, I don't think I told you this, so. Tell me, hear now. what you got? Uh, my shoulder wasn't sore at all. The only thing that was sore on me was my hip, but it wasn't sore from where you dug. It was sore because I felt like my muscles were working for the first time in years. Wow. Like I literally, after I, all I did was I saw you. I went to, I remember I was leaving straight from you to Paramount to a rehearsal yeah. at Paramount Studios. An hour into rehearsal, I was like, what in the hell is happening with my hip? <laughs> my goodness. And I was like, what's, what's going on right now? And at first I was like, oh no, did I hurt myself? And then I realized like, oh crap, there's just like a lot of stuff working and my hip feels so loose right now that I feel like it's actually firing. Yes. And I instantly got sore on that, but not from your pressure. I got sore from my muscles being turned on, I felt like. Yeah, and loosened. You know, if your hip is stuck up there, which I find with a lot of people, if it's stuck in a position that's been stuck for a while, Mm -hmm. when I release that, all the muscles are like, wait, 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 we were like up here and now we're down here and now we're over here. It's like, it, it takes time for them to just like yeah, chill out and realize, hey, this is the new place we're living now and we just, we, we're good. We just yeah, yeah. need to like calm down. And I went to my chiropractor that weekend and he was like, it's not your sacrum. He's like, your hip is so far jammed in. It's affecting your lower back where your sacrum is. Yes. And sure enough, he pulled it and he was like, dude, those are the biggest releases that we've gotten in forever. <gasps> oh. Wow. And then I was like, ha, huh, funny story I got to tell you now. And I told him, and he was like, holy crap, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. That And so. you know what? That's what I love because it does give people a, a more of a flexibility. Mm-hmm. And so when they do go and do their other treatments, they're more successful. I get my hips pulled out once to twice a week. Okay. That was the biggest release I've gotten in the last five years easily. That is. It was insane. Wow. Yeah. I'm so glad I could be part of that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so my last question that I want to end it on, cause I feel like this is something that I want to know. And a lot of people know is, is there an injury that is too old to be taken care of or can you address any injury? I love these questions. Thank you. <laughs> these so are things that I want to know they're myself. They're so great. <laughs> I, everyone asks me questions all day long, every day, and that nobody has asked me that. Okay. Not in my experience. I have worked on scar tissue that we have surmised has probably been in someone's body for 30 years. Wow. 30 years ago, they had some kind of accident or something happened. Um, and it's it's harder because it's been in there longer Understood. and their body has compensated around it. Okay. But honestly, I feel like there's there's not too much I haven't been able to to fix. I, wow. I've if somebody doesn't return to me, it's it's usually because they're just not grooving on the style. Mm-hmm. But possible, it yeah. isn't or they're fixed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but pretty much i'm gonna go with 99 percent of my clientele i fix something totally yeah yeah okay so, so yeah. There, that that gives a lot of people hope out there they just need to uh, find the right people yes. and connect with you and find yeah, others out there and i love answering questions so if you do want me to answer a question after this just go to vancouver healer just message me i'll answer it as best as i can i'm all about the edge yes. so i'm always putting up stuff on my story of stretching or tips and tricks, or what I've noticed, or something new I've learned um, in the process. I'm always learning something new, even in 14 years. Um, but please ask. There's no dumb questions. There, I'll repeat whatever we've said here. If you want to know like a little bit more, just message me. Yeah, totally. I like your page because you not only show like real life examples, but you're showing up little diagrams, but stuff that really relates to like the common person and just like the ones we showed today. So. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, just trying to make it that. very relatable so that people are like, oh, this is cool. Now everyone is going to see sausages very differently. Yes, totally. Okay. Yes. And if you're in the Vancouver area, you have no excuse but to seek her out. And I know there is a big community of you out there right now. One of my business partners, Aaron Tony, is actually out there on a project. So 
Aaron, I'm going to link you up. Oh, amazing. Got to get the rest of the team out there to hit her up. Yeah, I'm out. just visiting in L.A. Just, you know, L.A. is my happy place, and, and I just happen to get connected to some really cool people and, you know, give them some free sessions so that they could experience it, and hopefully it'll translate to Vancouver. Yeah, we got to get this visa going. Amazing. <laughs> Bring hey, her over. Anybody, <laughs> Anyone I'm that can help out that. with the O-1 visa, right? Yeah. So really quick before we head out of here, if yes. you could just look at the camera yeah. and tell people where they can find you online. Absolutely. So right now I do just have Instagram because I feel like it's the most uh, effective. I can just tell a story really quickly in pictures and a few words. So Instagram at Vancouver Healer. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming thank by. You. I really appreciate your time. Aww. And uh, I feel like this is a really good talk for a lot of us listeners and myself because these are things we deal with every day. Amazing. So thank you so much. Thank we'll definitely you, bring you by when you're back in town. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us here on another Jamcast. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always. And remember that every Monday we're dropping brand new Jam Breakdowns where we look at the top clips in the movement world. And then join us every Friday for Jamcast just like this where we interview influential people throughout the movement world from all all aspects, as you saw today. So with that being said, a very special shout out, as always, to Mr. Paul Whitecotton, who's running things behind Woo-hoo. the cameras in the Switcher app. A very special shout out to the Vancouver Healer over here. Go give her a follow and shout out to Margot. Thank you. And as always, I'm your host, Travis Wong. Thanks for joining us here on another Jamcast. Until next time, we will see you all soon. Thanks, Travis. Peace.